Hi, I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained and today we are going to address the question does sea ice contribute to sea levels rising? And in this video I'm going to demonstrate this by looking at a very popular uh, common misconception. We've got some ice here and we notice that some of the ice sits above the water. We all know that ice expands. So as the ice melts, will that cause the water level here to rise, stay the same or even go down? So we're going to look at that particular demonstration and we're going to address the question, does sea ice contribute to the sea levels rising? I'm going to place a little mark here for my level of water, like so. And then I'm going to do some time lapse and we're going to watch this melt over a short period of time. Let's watch. Well, surprise, surprise, my water level hasn't changed one bit. The blue mark is in exactly the same position that we started off with. So even though we had ice sitting below and above the water level, we had that melting, but it did not change the actual water level. So in a very quick answer to our question, does sea ice and do icebergs melting due to climate change affect the sea levels? No, they don't. They do not contribute at all to the sea level rising. Now, I'm not saying that sea levels aren't rising due to climate change, and I'm going to be discussing the physics behind sea levels rising in my next video but at least in this case I've demonstrated that melting ice doesn't contribute to the water level. However there's a small caveat and I'll explain that at the end of the video. What's the physics behind why this is such a case? Let's find out. Now to understand why the water stays at the same level we need to look at two aspects of physics. The first thing is, is why does ice expand when it gets cold and secondly what is the issue with buoyancy as to why some of the ice sits above the water even though the amount of water is going to be exactly the same when it melts. So here I have uh, some particles and these are going to be representing in this case neon and you can see they're moving around so it's acting a bit like a liquid. And we know that particles such as this when they cool will start to move less which is basically the kinetic theory of uh, materials and you can see now that the volume becomes less and that's true for most particular materials. When it cools they take up less space, they therefore have a greater density, they have a lower volume. But water is a little bit different. So here we have our water molecules. If you look very carefully, you can see that it's made up of an oxygen atom with two hydrogen atoms joined to it. But the important thing to remember is, is that it is a polar molecule. That is, the oxygen is slightly negative and the hydrogen are slightly positive. So when I cool it down, this is currently in its liquid state with a temperature of around 55 degrees. Let's see what happens. It takes less volume. And then suddenly it takes a lot more volume when it actually goes into the solid state. Now what's going on is, is that the energy levels of the molecules is a lot lower. And so now we can get these small weak bonds occurring between the oxygen of one molecule and the hydrogen of another. And so they start to sort of stick together. And as you can see, that causes these spaces to occur in between them. So in other words, now the volume is greater now that it's cooler. So it takes up more space. And so the density overall is less. Let's now that apply that to our block of ice. So here I have another a great animation from FET, which is the University of Colorado Physics Interactives. And here I have my fish tank and my block of ice over here. Now I'm going to place this block into the water, but you'll notice I've given it some values here and it's not actually as ice at this stage. I'm going to give it a volume of five liters and a mass of five kilograms. So I have the right amount of water here and I'm going to place this into my fish tank. What's gonna happen? Well, of course, Archimedes principle says is that the amount of volume that this block was, five liters, is going to be the amount that is going to be the displacement. So this 105 liters tells us that I've now had an increase of five liters. I had 100 liters beforehand. Now, what's going to happen if I change the density of this? Now, if I change the density so I increase the density, I can do that a couple of ways. I can increase its mass and of course I can increase its volume. So if I increase its mass, it's going to basically fall down to the bottom, but the volume is going to stay exactly the same. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it go back to five kilograms and we're going to not change the mass, we're going to change the volume and therefore change the density. Now, if I increase the volume, what's going to happen to the level of water? 
Well, you'll notice as I increase the volume and allow it to steady, you'll see I remain at five liters. That is, the amount that it's displacing is still five liters and a certain amount of volume now goes above it. And that's because of the fact that the surrounding material is of a higher density than our block because my block is going to have a buoyancy force exerted. And it really, since my density is 0 0.67, 0 0.67 kilograms per liter, that means 67% of this block is sitting below the water level and the remaining 33% is sitting above it. So if I make it volume even greater, such as that it is now 10, you'll notice now it's 0.5 kilograms per liter. And now I have here, 50% of it is below the water level. So I still got five liters below the water level, but I have another five liters sitting above the water level. So if I now reduce the volume so that we are getting what we know is ice, which is around 92 or 0.92 kilograms per liter, it's saying that we have here 92% of the uh, ice is sitting below the water level, but it still displaces five liters and I have a small percentage sitting above it. That means if this melts, it's going to not affect the mass, it's only gonna affect the volume, but of course the amount that's sitting up is going to return to the water, and so we're going to have exactly the same density of the water surrounding it, like so, and let it steady on, and now my volume is still five liters greater than what we started off with, and we have our water in the rest with the rest of the water. So in other words, if this represents my iceberg after it's melted, then it's melting. It's melting does not affect the overall level of the sea around it. In other words, icebergs melting, as long as they're in the water already, will not affect sea level rising. So I hope that's helped you understand why icebergs don't contribute much at all to rising sea levels. But I am making an assumption here. The assumption here is, is that the ice, the iceberg, is made up of water that has the same density as the surrounding seawater. And in my demonstration, that's the case. However, in reality, seawater is salty water. It has a slightly higher density than icebergs when they have melted. And as a result, they do contribute a small portion to the rising of sea levels as they melt. In a paper published in 2007 in the Geophysical Journal International, Peter Nerdlinger and Kay Brower show that melting icebergs do in fact contribute a small proportion to the global sea level rising, about 2.6%. Now they validated their findings by showing that actually blocks of ice float higher in seawater and subsequent water level rise once it's melted. Now, I've placed a direct link to their paper in the description below. Well, I hope that's helped you understand a little bit about the thermodynamics involved with melting ice. As I said earlier, in my next video, I'm going to be discussing what is contributing to the sea levels rising. And basically, it's melting ice that is already on land, but also thermal expansion. But I'm going to explain that in more detail in my next video. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Ring the bell to keep up to date with my latest videos. In any case, take care. Bye for now.